so guys once again if you can please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button on this video so guys in this next story a man who was known as the lord of fraud who blew 500,000 pounds in harrods and drove around in a 200,000 pound lamborghini after swindling more than 50 investors in a 4 million pound scam was jailed for more than seven years today jonathan our largest 39 scammed his victims including a serving police officer using company Zurich private capital, the Crown Court heard. Allard harvested the proceeds in a number of bank accounts, including one that took £1 million to Hong Kong. He spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on holidays across the world and treated himself to a Lamborghini Aventador. Allard, who lived in a £1 million luxury apartment in southwest London, also paid for the title Lord Jonathan Allard. He admitted one count of fraud between January the 1st, 2013 and December the 31st, 2017, and was sentenced today, and more than a dozen of his victims attended the court to see his sentencing. The prosecutor said that the scam involved scamming more than 50 victims using ZPC and that a scan of assets came to in excess of £4.2 million. His identification documents were used to set up the accounts, a number of linked accounts were used to spend money on luxury goods and a credit card in his name. Spending on the cards included half a million in Harrods, luxury watches over £400,000, a Lamborghini Aventador worth £220,000 in total. These luxury goods are worth over £2 million. The court heard that an investigator calculated the total sum of lifestyle spending of £300,000 in Barbados and a number of luxury establishments. Following his arrest, police officers also found a diary entry written by Allard in 2016 in which he wrote, I made £80,000 this month. I'm sick. Be first. Be smarter or cheat. It's about me getting whatever I want. It's about me. Get everything you want, Jonathan. You're worth it. You are the best. You are the man. In one email written in May 2016 to a member of his team, Allard said, this guy has a minimum of £300,000 to invest. We've encountered every single hurdle with him. His trust is secured. Bring him on board. He instructed another associate to rewrite something like this for the bellend before writing to the victim himself, place £50,000 in the soy facility and I will oversee this is done correctly. So he was sentenced to seven years and two months in prison. Judge Justin Cole told Allard, this was a systematic fraud sustained over five years. You were the main architect of the fraud. You inflicted misery on so many lives. It was a fraud from the outset. This is not one of those cases where a legit business turned to fraud. ZPC was a vehicle for your own enrichments. This was a devious scam. It was dressed up with a sophisticated way with premises in Canary Wharf and an official looking website. I describe you as the architect of this fraud and there is very strong evidence of your personal enrichments from this fraud. The thrust of your mitigation documents is a list of names of other people you seek to deflect onto. You quite literally wrote the scripts of these frauds which also reveals your attitude of contempt for the victims. The judge continued, you displayed extraordinary arrogance. Diary notes show you to be self-congratulatory and arrogant in the extreme. You inflicted misery that remains today. This is not a numerical exercise. It is hard to envisage a more serious type of fraud when it comes to the impact on others' life savings and the number of people involved. Letters written by Allard's victims also read out in court. One said, I'm 63 years old and a serving police officer. My wife is 57 and does not have a company pension. We had saved up over so many years with the intention to invest for a regular income during retirement. On discovery, we had been victims of fraud. My initial reaction was shock and horror. I felt humiliated, stupid and very angry. This has affected me emotionally as I believe I have let my wife down. I have suffered from depression and lack of sleep. We will try to recover financially best we can. I believe I will have to keep working 12 hour shifts as a police officer until I'm 66 years old. Another person who lost £125,000 in the fraud said, these funds equate to many years of hard work and toil that we were conned out of using this, using very convincing tactics. We believed ourselves to be intelligent and capable people, but we were pressured by the convincing manner of those who pushed us to invest over and over again. And a widower aged over 70 said they were dealing with the chilling prospect of working until I die or becoming too physically and mentally incapable to work anymore. So as I said, Allard was sentenced to seven years and two months imprisonment for one charge of fraud and confiscation proceedings have been adjourned with a hearing date set to seize his remaining assets in 2024. So guys, this is a new story coming from London Ways. And guys, in a new story coming from Northumbria Ways, and the man 
who murdered Sunderland schoolgirl Nikki Allen more than 30 years ago, has been handed a life sentence. David Boyd, who's 55, led seven-year-old Nikki away from outside the block of flats where she lived shortly before 10 o'clock on October the 7th, 1992. Her body was discovered the next morning in the then derelict Old Exchange building near to a family home at Weirgarth. She had been badly beaten and stabbed multiple times. On May the 12th, after hiding his crimes for three decades, a jury unanimously found Boyd guilty of Nicky's murder following a three-week trial at Newcastle Crown Court. I just want to say rest in peace, Nicky, and my condolences go out to your family. He was today back in the dock and he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a requirement to serve a minimum of 29 years behind bars. During the trial, the court was told forensic advancements proved crucial as police, using new techniques, were able to detect a DNA profile on Nicky's clothing that matched Boyd shortly after the case was reviewed in 2017. The senior investigating officer in this case, Detective Chief Superintendent Lisa Tika, said, First and foremost, my thoughts are with Nikki's family, and I'd like to thank them for their patience and strength shown during their relentless pursuit of justice. The pain and suffering that David Boyd has caused to so many people is beyond measure. As an investigative team, we have worked tirelessly to find the person responsible and crucially prove that it could only have been Boyd who murdered Nikki that night. Since 2017, we have taken more than 1,200 statements with 2,500 documents produced and over 5,500 actions created. The team has obtained DNA from more than 800 men travelling the length and breadth of the country to ultimately prove Boyd was responsible. Over the last six years, we have been supported by a team of amazing specialists and witnesses who have helped us in our pursuit of justice. I would like to thank them as well as the residents of Sunderland. Every single person who came forward and provided their DNA for the elimination helped to push us closer to securing justice for Nikki and her family, and without their help, this would not have been possible. Guys, in this next story, a man stormed into his wife's home and murdered her whilst their children were at school. Yasmin Begum is 40, was found collapsed at her home in Bethnal Green in East London in March last year by school staff after she failed to pick up her kids. The mum was stabbed several times and multiple items including a bank card and the jewellery she was wearing had been taken. Yesterday, Kuyum Mia, who's 41, was found guilty of a murder. The pair had been separated for about a year and Mia was captured on CCTV near Yasmin's address before entering the flat. He was seen heading north from Yasmin's address carrying a green and yellow bag for life, which appeared full. Mia dumped the bag in a rubbish bin and when it was later recovered, it had clothing stained with Yasmin's blood. He then used her bank card and withdrew £800 and two days later pawned two items of jewellery for about £200. Detectives found documentation inside Yasmin's home confirming divorce proceedings were underway and Mia was arrested in place though a few days later. I just want to say rest in peace Miss Bacon and my condolences go out to your family. Police found a trainer with Yasmin's blood on it at his home as well as an item that had been stolen from her house. Mia had pleaded guilty at an early hearing to theft and two counts of fraud and he was remanded in custody ahead of sentencing at the same court which is going to happen in the middle of June. Speaking on behalf of Yasmin's family, her brother said, Firstly, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to the detectives who worked so tirelessly to collect the evidence that caught Yasmin's killer. Without their efforts, he may have gone on to put another family through this nightmare. Today, an evil creature was found guilty of murder, fraud and burglary. A creature that should never be allowed to walk the streets again. He chooses to murder a daughter, a mother and a sister for no reason other than financial gain. He values life at £800 as that is what he stole. He broke into our sister's home and brutally murdered her and then robbed her. We hope that he gets reminded every day of his measly existence, how evil he is and what awaits him in the next life. So Detective Chief Inspector Larry Smith of the Met Specialist Crime Command led the investigation said, Kuyo Mia is a violent coward who ambushed Yasmin in her own home and brutally attacked her. She did not stand a chance. When Mia was motivated by jealousy due to the impending divorce or greed due to his callous actions in withdrawing cash and pawning jewellery, immediately after the murder remains unclear, as he did not provide any straight answers during his police interviews. Instead, he refused to own up to his actions, continually lying and then changing his story 
when concrete evidence disproved his version of events. Yasmin was a young mother who was about to embark on a new chapter in her life away from Mir. However, she was denied the opportunity in the most violent of circumstances. Mir has rightfully been found guilty of murder and will now face the consequences of his actions and I hope his conviction provides some small solace to Yasmin's family and those that he knew. So guys, these are a couple of stories coming from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked, keep it real.